don't get me wrong. I get it. Nothing feels better than looking at those three nerd ass geniuses on Jeopardy and getting a chance to go Psh, dumb asses. And when I first saw that three entire Jeopardy contestants managed to simultaneously miss the clue, Matthew 6, 9 says, Our Father, which art in heaven, this be thy name. It was my first reaction, too, because I enjoy the rare moments when I'm temporarily smarter than even the dumbest Jeopardy contestant. But upon reflection, I feel like derision is the wrong response. So th this infraction came last Tuesday in an obvious nod to Father's Day. The category was dadjectives. So every answer was an adjective and every clue had something about a father in it. And this is the $200 question. This is double jeopardy at this point. So that's the easiest clue. And it's the blank be thy name one, right? All three contestants completely spaced on it. Nobody even rang in. They didn't even try. They just stared dumbly forward until the time ran out. And that anti-vaxxer they replaced Alex Trebek with chimed in with the correct answer, which is, of course, hallowed. Or, or I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What is hallowed? And, and predictably, the Internet's response was indignant. How dare all these supposedly smart people not know the opening line of the most common prayer in all of Christianity? How dare this not be basic knowledge that every reasonably educated person commands? And it wasn't just Twitter. A quick Google reveals headlines from major media sources like NBC News's Jeopardy fans reel at Lord's Prayer question going unanswered. Fox News's Jeopardy fans stunned by Lord's Prayer questions. And the New York Post's Jeopardy contestants fail to answer Bible clue about our father. This is a fucking major media event, apparently. And like I said, I, I do get it. I knew the answer, right? I'm, I'm not sure I would have known the answer under pressure in front of a live studio audience, mind you. Anybody who's done a trivia night knows that there's nothing so simple that you can't completely blank on it when you're on the spot. But I'm still kind of surprised that nobody got this one. That being said, I'm not stunned. I'm not reeling. I mean, two of the three contestants had negative dollars on the board halfway through the game, so they probably were second-guessing themselves on everything at that point. And the third guy, the, the returning champion, was a dude named Suresh Krishnan. So, you know, high probability he didn't grow up reciting the Lord's Prayer. But on top of all of that, and this bit is important here, the Lord's Prayer doesn't actually matter to the overwhelming majority of people. What the fans were actually reeling from wasn't the ignorance of the Jeopardy contestants, who, to be clear, answered way fucking harder questions both before and after that. What they were reeling from was the fact that their religion has become so culturally irrelevant that a group of three intelligent people can go all the way through their formal education without ever needing to know their favorite magic spell. And that is actually worth celebrating. I mean, you know, look, I'd love to challenge all the people who are complaining about these dumbass Jeopardy contestants to answer literally any question at all about Hinduism or Islam or any religion that isn't their own. Fuck, I'd love to hear them try to define the word hallowed on the spot, to be honest with you. And of course, as friend of the show and former Jeopardy champion Hemet Mehta points out, everybody has blind spots in their cultural knowledge. Given the nation's demographic shift away from Christianity, it's barely even surprising that one of those blind spots happened to be Christianity 101 for all three of these contestants. So as tempting as it might be to make fun of these people, I feel like atheism should be taking a victory lap right now. I mean, honestly, it would have been unthinkable for something like this to happen in like 1964 when Jeopardy first debuted. Right. Hell, that would have been only two years after the Supreme Court ruled mandatory prayer in school to be illegal. So it would have been basically like asking modern Americans about the opening line of the Pledge of Allegiance. In fact, it's possible that in 1964 censors literally wouldn't have let them ask that question because it assumed that every red blooded American didn't already know the Our Father. But in the intervening 60 years, our culture has evolved a lot. And it's evolved away from Christianity. And it continues to evolve away from Christianity. And as it does, Christians will be outraged and flabbergasted and real again and again by just how little a person can know about their faith and still get by in this country. And we'll get to watch with ever more satisfaction as they slowly realize that we're getting our own daily bread. Nobody's delivering them from evil. And thine kingdom ain't coming.